All right, so I'm just going to do a quick introduction to logarithm functions and the natural log. So logarithm functions look like this. f of x is equal to, uh, let's do this really general, log base a of x. Or instead of f of x, we could put this equal to y. Now we can rearrange this. Um, we can rearrange this to look like this. If we're solving for x, uh, we can have x is equal to a to the power of y. This is just one of the rules about log functions. You can rearrange them in this way. Now, something to note here is a, our base a here has to be greater than 1. Um, if it's equal to 1, we're just going to get every x value to be 1, because like 1 to the power of anything is just going to stay 1. And also, we can't have negative x values, um, because, for example, if a is greater than 1, a to the power of any exponent will never give us a negative value. In fact, it won't even give us 0. It'll just give us values that will be progressively closer to 0 or you know, really big in the other direction. Well, with that said, the two most common bases uh, for logs are a is equal to 10 and a is equal to this letter e. Uh, when this e is actually equal to, it's about 2.718. So uh, we'll start off with the top one here. This is called uh, a common log, and you can write it like this. Log base 10 of x. Um, you can also rearrange it to, or not rearrange it, you can just write it like this, just say log of x. So if you ever see it written like this, just log of x, you just assume that there's a 10 there. Now for this one, yeah, log base e of x, write it here e of x. This is called the natural log and it's can be written like this ln of x. So if you ever see of x. So if you ever see ln x, that's exactly the same thing as log base e to the x. So let's just do a drawing example. Um, let's try and graph uh, log of x. y is equal to log of x. So if we start picking some values, um, we already mentioned that x can't equal zero, right? Because remember if a is some number greater than 1, we can't get x equal to 0. That just doesn't work. It'll never happen. So let's pick other numbers. Let's pick an easy one. Say let's pick x is equal to 1. So if we have log base 10 of 1 is equal to y, then we can rearrange this and write that 1 is equal to 10 to the y. And what y value would give us 10? 10 to the y is equal to 1, well that's y is equal to 0. So we get the ordered pair, x is equal to 1, and y is equal to 0. Now another easy point to plot on this graph is uh, where x is equal to 10. So we'll just, we'll skip all the ones in between, you'll see why in one second. So log base 10 of 10 is equal to y. So when we rearrange this, we will have 10 is equal to to the y. Right, and this will give us, well, 10 to the power of 1 is equal to 10, so we would get the ordered pair of x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 1. And so it passes through this point here, you can't really see that, and it also passes through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It will pass through this point as well. Um, so let's pick some numbers that are actually smaller than 1 now for x. So if we picked, uh, let's say, x is equal to you know, log, I'm just picking easy numbers that are easier to graph, uh, log base 10 of, I'll pick this one, 0 0.1 is equal to y. So same thing, rearrange, and we get 0 0.1 is equal to 10 to the y. And the solution to this is negative 1. And that's because if we have, I'll just do it over here in a different color. If we have 10 to the negative 1, that's the same thing as writing 1 over 10 to the power of 1, I guess, uh, equals, which is the same thing as writing 1 over 10. And if you put this into decimal form, 
this is equal to 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So there you go. So this one here, our x value would be 0 0.1, and our y value is negative 1. And I'll just do one last one here. Um, well, actually, let's just draw this. So we'd have the point x value of 0 0.1 and the y value of negative one. So it's like already like even behind here, somewhere in there. It's getting pretty close to the x, the y-axis already. Um, so now let's just do one last little example. Log uh, base 10 of 0 0.001. 0, 0, 001 is equal to y. And here we go. So we have 0 0.001 is equal to 10 to the y. Well, if we put in a negative 3, it would be the same thing as up here. Uh, it would be, say we had 10 to the power of negative 3, is the same thing as 1 over 10 to the third, which is equal to 1 over 1,000, which is equal to, in decimal form, 0 0.001. So if we want to graph that, uh, we know our y value is negative 3, and our x value is like 0 0.001. It's super, super close. Like you can't even really see it. It's really hard for me to draw because it's so close. So anyways, we get this curve here. Uh, it passes through the point 1, 0, and it curves up this way to that point, and it just keeps going on. Oops, it's not a squiggly, though. And it just keeps going off rising slower, slowly in that direction. And if we go to values that are lower than 1 on the x-axis, it's going to curve through, it's going to curve through this point, and it's going to get super, super close to the y-axis, but never actually touch. Now this is kind of cool, actually. If you look at it, as you go, as you go this way, as your x-values increase, your slope is always decreasing. It's going to keep leveling off more and more. And as you go towards, towards 0 on the x-axis, your slope is going to keep getting steeper and steeper and steeper. Now say we wanted to find out where y was equal to 10. Well, we would have to write it like this. Log base 10 of x, we don't know x yet, is equal to 10. So when we rearrange this, we get x is equal to 10 to the power of 10. That is actually 10 billion. Like that's like way over there. Um, so as you'll see, it takes only 10 units to get up to y is equal to 1, but by the time you're up to y is equal to 10, uh, you've gone 10 billion units over on the x-axis. So that kind of just kind of hits that point home that the slope keeps getting shallower and shallower. But with that said, um, the range of this equation is actually all of the real numbers. Uh, let's just write it here. I'll write the domain and the range. Range. So the range, as you can see, it's going to cover all of the y values going down, and it will cover all of the x values or all of the y values going up. Uh, it's just you have to keep going way farther uh, over on the x-axis for each point you want to go up on the y. So with that said, the range is equal to all the real numbers, and the domain, well, it's never going to be equal to zero, and it's never going to be less than zero. So it's all of the x values such that x is greater than 0. And uh, I guess one last thing while I have you here, I'm just going to say there's a couple log properties. Here, let's write that here. Oops. Properties um, that are kind of cool. Uh, first of all, all of the log functions have, they have the same general shape. They're always going to look like this. And um, they're always going to pass through this point 1, 0. Because any base, no matter which base you choose, uh, when you raise it to the power of 0, the x value will be 1. Now the other cool properties about logs is here, I'll just write down 3 right here. So if you have the log of some number a times some other number b, you can rewrite this as log of a plus log of b plus log of b. And that's great, like it just it gets rid of multiplying and just turns it into two simple log functions added together. Um, likewise if you had say the log of 
a over b, a divided by b, that's the same thing as log of a minus log of b. And the other one I'll mention here is that if you had an ugly looking log function like this, log of, let's say, a to the c, you have an exponent in there, it looks pretty nasty, but you can just pull the c, you can just pull it out to here and rewrite it like this, c times log of a. So anyways, that's just a really brief introduction to logs, get you familiar with rearranging the formulas and a couple shortcuts you can take down here.